Mm-hmm. Okay, so we're, we're hearing this might take a few weeks, an unknown amount of time for this to actually close despite tonight's vote. How long till the lease is final and Mr. Ho- Mr. Halsizer becomes the owner of this team? I don't know that. That's not. It will move on to the next step, and I'm not involved in the next step. And who can say how long it will take? Oh, you're not involved in the next step? I don't go to the bond market, no. Well, Mr. Bettman said the it's up to the council. I believe that the process was outlined for you by mm-hmm. Mr. Lynch. Can you so explain where the $97 million is coming from? The, the lease says it's to be determined. You know, uh, I think we've talked about it over and over again. We've talked about the income that comes from the arena, and that will be used to pay the management fees. The income from the arena, Mm -hmm. specifically? Rent. Rent of how much, 500,000? Rent, surcharges, so forth. I believe it's outlined in the lease. It's not, it says to be determined. So is someone else has other questions. Yeah, we'll is, the, is the city relieved at this point that you've reached this particular point, you've jumped over this hurdle? I think we're relieved. I think the main point that has to come out that uh, is not stressed is that there are costs to operate that building. Somebody has to pay the cost to operate the building or else we shut the building down. If we shut the building down, we have absolutely no revenue to make the bond debt or to pay the insurance or to do anything else. So the cost to the taxpayer really is if that building is not producing income. That's where the cost comes to the taxpayer. You given, mentioned given your, your own concerns. Misgivings coming in today, are you 100% satisfied now given your own misgivings coming into the day? You know, I think everybody would always like a contract that gave a little bit more. You know, I'm sure Mr. Halsizer would, and I would, and, but I think this is uh, very good. I will say that I believe he will be a very good owner. I think he'll be a very good community member. I think that he will put um, a really uh, good, honest effort into making the kinds of improvements that need to be made. We're talking about a building that has been neglected by previous uh, owners. There's a lot of catching up that needs to be done. There's a lot that needs to be done. I believe he's the right person that will come in with the right attitude um, to build the Coyotes into a stronger team and to build the arena into a stronger producing facility. Mayor, um, two more questions. In the past year, the city's gone through uh, yeah. intense budget cuts, surely, uh, as the council member said, not as deep as uh, as some other cities, but you're going to be facing a ten million dollar um, uh, payment for the arena management fee. Where is that going to come from? I think we just answered that. It comes from the income from the arena. But the arena has been only just covering the debt. So how are you going to generate ten million more in it the next will. year? There's various revenue streams, and we could probably talk about. That. I, I think you you know evidently didn't hear the presentation in here but they'll be happy to sit down with you and go through the various revenue streams. Last question. Mayor, any final statement you want to make? Um, I think that you heard a lot of (coughs) meaningful and very important statements tonight from people other than the elected officials of Glendale. I think you heard from people who understand how the economy all works together. Um, We don't have a state that is very strong in economic development. So as cities, we go out and we build our own economic development opportunities. That's what this is. I will tell you how I feel. We had an opportunity to not go forward with a commercial uh, endeavor, a sports and entertainment district along the freeway. We could have allowed homes to be built like everybody else. And if that had happened, we would be like so many of the other cities that are experiencing uh, foreclosure rates of 25 to 40 percent within their communities. There's no revenue being created at all there. There's no wealth being created. Instead, we have a vibrant area where we can, we can track numbers that show there's <laughs> four million people a year at a minimum that come into that area. Those are four million people who are contributing to the economy of Glendale, who are contributing to the services that we provide for our citizens. And this is at a time, as we said so many times tonight, this is at a time when the economy is at its lowest. Just imagine what will happen 
when it comes back. You know, there were some statements made tonight that were extraordinarily irresponsible. If you think back, Westgate, as we know it today, really only started coming online in August of 2006 because the stadium was going, uh, the first Cardinals uh, season was going to be played and the Fiesta Bowl was going to be played. Our hotel and conference center didn't open until November of 2006, but yet you heard where 8 to $13 million a year is coming in revenue just from the Coyotes. And we're talking about, what, four years? at the worst possible economy. So the travesty and the irresponsible action for the city of Glendale would be to allow that building to either go dark lo or lose its main tenant that would be responsible, I, I don't know how, uh, what 42 nights equals percentage-wise, but I'm thinking it's at least 30% of the usage in the arena. Not really. yeah. One what third. Is it? One third. One third. Mm -hmm. You don't chase away your tenant that provides one third of the usage of your building. So yes, I think the right thing happened tonight and this is good that we're moving forward and I think Mr. Halsizer and his group are exactly the people that will really make a, a success out of this. Do you feel like the 120 day renegotiation period